floor and moving on the pit and so we're going to be able to get in there and work on that very nice What is up everyone um, on the kit today, which is good. Um, I think I've solved the audio problem from last time, so if the audio is fine, let me know in the comments. I've changed the streaming setup, so theoretically I can sort of chat in real time, whereas before it was really, really delayed. Um, I've got the kit set up, everything. We're going to be talking about the flow and movement today, so um, let's see what happens. say hi in the chat because they'll know that I'm sitting here talking to myself. Um, I mean, that's fine. If they want to sit and talk to myself, they will uh, they'll do that. So like I said, we're going to be talking about flow and movement around the kit. And I'm just really going to be sharing some sort of, of my teaching ideas, some insights for playing, you know, not necessarily faster on drum kit, but for playing cleanly and smoothly and in a relaxed fashion around drum kit. Kind of following on from what we talked about on the pad lesson previously. That live, by the way, all about hand technique is still up there. You can still check it out. Um, and as always, please ask any questions about anything related to drums, music, and even life, if you really want to ask a question about it. be switching to an overhead cam every now and then. So hopefully this looks nice. So say hi in the chat if you are still if you are there, let me know who's there, let me know where you're from. It's always really weird to me still that some guy in a concrete box in Scotland is chatting to people all over the world um, about drums, really, and sort of hopefully helping you get better at the drums. there let me know if the audio is totally fine um, I'm using some overheads and stuff like that so just let me know I'll be using my hands next up speaking of which where am I sitting that could have been embarrassing
Rivers is having a great day. I feel like absolute half five here. Thank you, mate. Um, hey, Ryan, how's it going? Where are you from, dude? I'm going to assume that everything is fine and we'll just get started because this will obviously stay on the channel so if you catch up late or you want to catch up at the start you can always rewind it go watch it again any of the exercises you may have asked me questions about later on should you feel you can find me on instagram at dave Bridge media you can obviously subscribe here if you're new and all of that good stuff so flow and movement it's a pretty big topic in terms of how much confusion it causes a lot of students now i find and this is partially because when you're a student and you're starting to learn, you're a little bit uncomfortable around the hips and things like it. I find that often we get blocked into certain areas. So we can kind of be really comfortable here on the on the sort of the groove side, as I call, or we're sort of angular, we're sort of staying right in the position, but we can't really transition smoothly. But the masters, the people that we aspire to be like, they make it look so absolutely effortless. So today I'm hopefully going to show you some tips that I use and teach and the ways that I teach and the ways that I've developed my own flow ratio to the level that it's currently at. I'm not the fastest on the blanket, I'm not the cleanest on the blanket, but it's definitely something I've focused on for a long time and something I aspire to bring into my students, that fluidity of thought as it were, so that the ideas come out of your head. So flow, movement around the blanket, what I'm going to do is I'm hopefully going to answer a couple of questions today, the main two questions I'll ask. So A, how to move around the drum kit and feel free behind it without feeling restricted, that's number two. And then how to pr improve your overall fluidity on the kit. And I've got a few questions and a few points that I want to cover and then I'll dive into some exercises and then after that can ask some sort of questions about this or anything you've got. Um, Who are you from Jamaica? That's so freaking cool. Ryan's from Jamaica, like what? The, w the internet is a wonderful thing. Okay, so no matter the size of your kit, being comfortable behind it is very important. Now, I play on a variety of different kits. I'm staying over here and there's my electric kit. It's basically what I practice on because drums are really loud, it's quite a reverby room, and when you're practicing, you don't sound very good. So I'd rather put the headphones on and make myself feel better about myself. But also, it's just easier on the ears, you don't get the fatigue. Now that electric drum kit is set up really big and really strong to allow me to sort of over-exaggerate the motions that I have to go through when I play a real drum kit. You might, though, play lots of different kits. You might play a uh, one-up, two-down kit. You might play a three-up, one-down kit. You might play a four-up, four-down kit. It doesn't really matter. You need to be fluid and comfortable behind any size kit. So gig-wise, session-wise, music-wise, it's going to be different depending on what you sort of come across, what type of music you play, what type of music or musician you want to be, and what type of what type of playing is demanded of you by an artist or somebody that you're working with. So to start off, let's talk, while we're talking about kits, let's actually just talk about ergonomics for a second. So I'm not going to tell you because I've said how to set up your kit. I'm going to be like, this is what you need to do and you need to do this. What I will say is there's a couple of things that will help. Um, I'm going to switch to the overhead cam. If you're not hearing, turn the volume up. There we go. Okay, give us two seconds. I'm going to turn the volume up. It's all about trial and error, isn't it? It's all about working it out. Uh, let me know if that's better. It seems to be a louder sort of boost there. Is that any better? Honestly, technology. I want to play drums. Is that a better volume or worse volume? No, it won't be worse, but is it is it good enough? Are we all cool? Yeah, man. Thanks, AJ. Welcome back. Okay. So, note to self, don't mess with the settings after someone said it sounds fine. Ergonomics of the kit. I'm going to switch to the overhead cam and I'm going to 
talk about this setup here. Now, this is a four-piece setup. We have a snare drum, obviously, 14-inch snare drum, uh, floor, floor tom, rack tom, tom one, depends what you want to call. I've got my little accoutrement over here, my little stacker, hat, crash, ride. That's what I play because it looks good on camera and also it's easy to set up and tear down. Now, in terms of the way things are set up, my snare drum is at a level where when I'm resting parallel with the kit, with the, th with the, with the head, my stick is parallel, level, I'm not too high, I'm not too low, and I don't have any tension. I don't have any tension in my shoulder. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. So this is the center of my kit. This is get set up first. Then I've got my floor tom roughly level, give or take. And then my tom, here's, here's the thing about toms, right? If you have them too flat, if you think about physics, right, you want to be hitting the snare drum and any drum at the right angle to get the right amount of volume and the right amount of tone. So if you hit it too high, if your stick is too high, if you're angling down or angling up the other way, it will be a little bit either thin or really thick, right? You want to have that rebound and all that sort of stuff. But the same thing applies to toms. And I see loads of guys with like really angled toms like that, which means that if you think about when you're hitting a drum, you're kind of like swiping it like that. And then if you have it super flat, then you're not, you're going to hit the rim first. You have to come over and you're having to do all manner of different weird stuff with your body. So effectively, my thought process behind setting up a kit and the ergonomics of the kit is put your feet where the pedals should be, where you think they should be, get your snare drum right, and then close your eyes and hit the center of the drum. That means, if I do this in real time, sorry. Ah, dudes. All right, I'm going to just quickly nip away and I'm going to turn this right up. Right, it says I've got a really hot level coming into OBS. Still working out, use OBS, guys. Um, but I can control it a little bit. Okay, tell me if this is good before we continue. Does this feel a little bit stronger? A little bit more in your face? Waiting for the chat to catch up. Better, cool. Right, apologies for that, guys. I'm still learning this stuff, so please let me know if it sounds utterly rubbish. I was about to swear there, but utterly rubbish. Um, this is a learning experience for me. Better, I hope the kit, perfect. Thank you, Tim. It's awesome we've got so many people, I have no idea who you are. This is amazing. Thank you for joining me. So, ergonomics of the kit. Um, basically set it up. So I'm going to switch to this overhead cam, and you can see here that if I close my eyes, I'm hitting the center of the drum. Trust me, I'm closing my eyes. which means I don't have to think about it. Vinnie Colyuta, one of the best drums in the world. If you don't know who Vinnie Colyuta is, then don't leave this live stream, watch it till the end, and then go and just binge watch some Vinnie Colyuta. But he says, thought is the enemy of flow. And if you're thinking about where your drums are, if you're having to think about, like I have to adjust myself to hit random different things, you ain't ever gonna flow cleanly, and those ideas are gonna be stifled, as it were. So the ergonomics of the kit are very simple, set it up the way your body's built. Try to fit stuff in where you think it's comfortable and make sure you can hit it with your eyes closed. Because that means when you're in the zone and you're playing drums, let me know if those drums volumes were fine, by the way. If you're playing with musicians and you're playing in the studio, for example, where you have to super concentrate on, you know, playing in time and those kind of things, then you don't want to be thinking about, right, where's my drums? Where's the tom? Am I going to hit that tom or am I going to hit the rim? Now, what we can do is when we are practicing flowing exercises, we can also work on our accuracy by aiming for the center of the drum. Now, I practice an electric kit, not only to keep it quiet, but also because the pads are really small. And therefore, it's like target practice. I'm hitting the center of those very small pads, which means when you get on a really big drum, then you can at least, you know, feel confident that you're going to hit the center and you're just hyper accurate. And then I can just play the drums. That's the idea. No worries, guys. I will stay super, super close. Kind of in a weird, like, ASMR kind of way. So... I want to share with you the one tip, and I'm going to try my very best to make sure this is crystal clear because this is the big thing that just like light bulb moment for me. What movement and flow happens in the space between the notes? 
And too often, or all too often, I see students who, and you might have done this, and you might be like, oh yeah, I totally do that, where they play a note, and maybe they're, maybe they're grooving away, right? So they're grooving away like this. And then they go to play a fill, and because you've played a note on the and of four there, they're still there a microsecond before the one. So they do this. You notice that sort of jarriness there. But movement and flow and fluidity happens in the space. So it's all about that space in the note. The great thing about drums, right, is we're not responsible for the sustain of our instrument. So if I hit this drum, this is a drum, and I put a little bit of gaff tape on it, so therefore it's muffling slightly. If I change the head from this power center reverse, which you drum geeks will be able to tell me is like a single ply with like a dot thing, so it's kind of like a one and a half ply. But if I had a really open snare drum sound, that would ring, that would ring so much more in, a, in this space. And then if I took it into like the bathroom, it would ring slightly differently. So we're not really responsible for the sustain of our instrument. And therefore, well, as soon as we've played a note, we can get to the next one, get to the next place. So check this. I'm going to do like a little, um, a very small fill, and I'm going to sort of go to this tom, and I'm going to pause on the very last note. So I've got one E and da. I'm going to hit two on there, and I want to show you where my hand is naturally. I'm not going to try it. I'm trying, trying to not think about it. Didn't think about it, hit the rim, but notice where my hand was. Not, or, like that. And that's that fluidity thing. Same thing on the left hand. So if I'm going to hit the A, ah, for example, I'm ready to go. I'm in position to play that note before I'm actually due to play the note. So movement happens in the space. Now, if you want to practice this, you can do it on the pad. I've got my pad. I imagine this is going to be quite quiet, so I'll flip it over to this side that you're not meant to play. We can hear that fine. Now, when you're practicing, let's say, for instance, we're just doing like hand-to-hand -hand triplets or something like that, which is, I'm going to accent that one and three, uh, one and two, so. We're again coming up for the accent or the movement, as it were, before we're due to play it. So we don't do this. We do this. So on the upbeat, as in the ta, we're actually also going up. So up, 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 up. You get the gist. So movement happens in the space. And if you want to be fluid around the drum kit, you've got to be in a constant state of movement. Yeah, kind of Tai Chi stuff. It's Vinny, again, he says it's like dealing cards. You should be playing the drums like you're... You should be playing the drums like you're dealing cards. You should be playing the drums like it's free and it's easy, like a croupier, you know, just whizzing out those cards instead of really stiff and static. Tension, like we talked about in the previous live stream, which you obviously you can go and check out if you want, is a, just like an instant, like everything killer. Your groove goes, your timing goes, your fluidity goes, everything falls apart. So try and be relaxed when you're playing anywhere, shoulders, arms, and all that sort of stuff. But movement happens in the space. So if you take anything away from here, besides the fact that I have no idea how you work technology, it is to move in the space. So let me just demonstrate that again. I'll just go around the kit, I'll leave the snares off. I'll play kind of soft. And I will just try to flow and I'll stop every now and then before I hit, for instance, the right cymbal or the floor tone. So you can see that I'm already in, I'm already there before I need to be there. Cool, I'm glad everything is working. see how I'm trying to remain fluid as much as possible. Honestly, as much as I can, I'm being as fluid as possible. It doesn't always work. And sometimes if I'm playing faster tempos that I'm not comfortable with, then that tension will creep up. But the movement happens, and I'll say it again, because repetition, 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 it validates it. R movement is in the space. Fluidity happens in the space between the notes, not the microsecond before the note or on the note. 
So next point I want to make is about practice. Next point I want to make is about practice. Um, obviously, you know, hopefully, that I am um, mad into practice, practice systems, practicing efficiently. And the whole point of this whole channel is really to help you practice smarter and get you get achieve your goals uh, on the drum kit in music as quickly and as efficiently as possible, but getting a well of deep knowledge. So when you're practicing, I like to do what's called stacked practice. Um, and I will talk maybe talk about this another time. But the idea behind it is we're going to try to make a super smoothie of practice. So for example, certain things you can work on all the time. So your coordination, get that left foot involved all the time. Counting, that's another level of coordination and independence. We can always work on it. And, and we want to work on our movement as much as possible. So when I'm practicing, let's say I'm practicing like an exercise that's lick-based. Let's say I'm doing like um, like a hand builder kind of, no, like a linear thing. Like let's say, for instance, a little exercise that I do sometimes where we're moving like a single kick between uh, or through a 16th note grid. So it starts in the one, so one, two, three, four. Then we move it to the E. One, two, three, four. Sally metronome there. And then the and, one, two, three, four. And then finally, one, two, three, four. Kind of, that is a prime opportunity. Once you're feeling comfortable with the exercise, of course, a prime opportunity to move around the drum kit. Because really that is like a builder. It's like a technical exercise that you need to work on to help you get you know faster. And it's just muscle building. So we need reps. We need over and over again, reps and reps. If you're staying on one surface, with your licks, your chops, your things that you're practicing, your technical exercises, you're kind of missing an opportunity to practice flow, then practice being fluid around the drum kit. So I would take that exercise and I would start to just move it around the drum kit because I'm going to do this for five minutes and I would get bored kind of easily. So it's unless. I'll switch to the overhead cam because why not? Once again, thanks for all your tips and help with getting this dialed in because obviously it's a bit of a work in progress. the gist so AJ's tagging me in a story so practicing flow movement can happen all the time and I remember actually being with um, AJ if you don't know AJ go check him out he is um, just a dude doing cool awesome things we did an interview with him on the channel but you should de definitely check out his own playing his own books, as well as his drum camp, which is really sick. And I went, I, I did a clinic with AJ in, in Bristol in the UK, and one of the questions asked was about flow. It's like, how do you practice flow? Now, my kind of facetious answer was, how, how, when do you practice flow? Do you ever practice it? Because if you don't practice it, you can never get good at it. But like so much of life, there's so many things pulling at our time. Like we want to work on our hands and our feet and our coordination and our groove and our musicality and our chops. So I like to put in, through the stack practice method, as many different like easy wins as possible. If I'm doing an exercise and, I, and I'm not just playing a groove thing, I'm moving it around the drum kit. If I'm working on a rudiment on the kit, I'm moving it around the drum kit. If I'm doing, hell, even if I'm doing like, even if I'm doing a groove, I might move that around the drum kit to kind of just keep me, you know, musically entertained as it were. Now, before we get into some exercises, cheers, bro, many thumbs up and a prayer emoji. Hashtag bless. Uh, before we get into any specific exercises, which obviously shows why you're here, um, I want to talk about a few different really classic shapes if you're really struggling to get this kind of flow thing happening. So one of the classic shapes we can do, which is an old jazz thing, is this L shape. Starting on the snare drum, we move up to the first tom, back to the snare drum, then over to the floor tom. So it's an L. It goes like this. I'll do it in the overhead cam. So if we did like a, uh, hey, 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 did it wrong. That's a classic shape. Now, if I'm struggling 
Now, if I'm struggling to jump between those things, um, or let, let's say I'm working on that exercise there, where it's like, if I'm struggling to think like, oh, I want to be free around the drum kit, and when I try to be free around the drum kit, it sounds like a drum kit falling down the stairs, I will revert back to these classic shapes. So the L shape in that kick left, right, left context would sound like this. And I'll switch again to the overhead cam. You can see there, it kind of makes musical sense. And it's an easy win. I'm still practicing my flow. I'm still practicing moving around the drum kit because really, as long as you are moving around the drum kit, you are practicing moving around the drum kit. It doesn't necessarily have to sound good. We're not, um, this is a bit of a tangent, but let's say you're practicing fills or chops or whatever. Often I will have a student improvise something or play a fill, like be improvising fills or be like, move that fill around the drum kit. And they will stop themselves because they think it doesn't sound good. Now, we can never know if a fill, for example, is the correct thing for this music or is, is not the correct thing for music, but if it's good or bad, because there is no music around it. So until there is a musical context, until you're playing it with a band, with an artist, at tempo, in a song, and it serves the purpose of a fill in a song, then how do you know it's good or bad? Just do it anyway. You never know. It might be the weirdest thing that you play, and that might be the perfect fill. There's lots of examples of things that are either too chopsy, by everyone's standards, but they, you know, they make it in. For example, like let's say take like Fifty Ways to Leave Your Lover. That's a classic groove, which came about because Steve Gadd was messing around in between takes, playing something that he probably th he probably was working on to satisfy his drumming nerdery, but actually made it on a record as a super famous groove. So, working on, you know, just moving around the drum kit might unlock other ideas and different things. You never know if it's going to be good or bad until it's done with the music. And only then, it actually is not good or bad. It's just the wrong choice in the moment. So the L shape is classic. One, two, three, four. We can also do triangles with different starting positions. Now, generally, because I'm mainly making videos and, and online stuff, I'm playing this sort of small four piece. Obviously, there's no gigs anymore or at the moment. So um, there might be where you are. Awesome sauce. But in, in Scotland, there are no gigs. So... I kind of play with a small kit just to keep things easy um, filming-wise, but also when I was doing gigs, it was just kind of because I was a bit lazy and I didn't want to set up a real big kit. So a triangle shape with different starting positions is also very useful. So if we have, let's say, we're going to do this thing four times, kick right, left, right, and we move it around the drums like this. So that was the L shape again. Well, the fourth one, I will return to my starting position. And because we've got, oops, and because we've got different tom positions, we've got different starting positions. So we could have snare, tom, floor, or floor, uh, tom, floor, snare, or floor, snare, tom. So again, if you're ever stuck, if you honestly are ever stuck, just do these triangles or this L shape. The other thing as well, which kind of leads into improvisation more than anything else, would be the um, the planes, as it were, and restricting yourself kind of in planes. So you could be like, this is my plane here. My plane here would be my stacker, my tom and my ride. I could do this plane. I could do the symbol plane. I could just do this plane. But moving and restricting yourself between different sort of levels or different routes around the drum kit is kind of an easy way of not having to think about it too much because when we're practicing something, we're just kind of going, we need to go through the motions a lot. So more thought on being fluid, less thought on where am I going to play. So now, 26 minutes later, audio issues aside, we're now onto the exercises. So I'm going to give you a few exercises that I really, really like, but obviously I hope that you'll understand that in order to practice flow and movement and be more fluid around the kit, you have to practice being fluid and moving around the kit. So do it all the time. Whenever you can, move it around the drums. Try it different places, up and down, backwards and forwards, as much as you can. And the more you do it in your daily or your, your regular practice, shall we say, then the easier it will become. The easier, more fluid and more relaxed you get around the kit. And as such, you will feel less restricted and you'll be more confident to take 
better choices. I guess just try some stuff. So classic exercise is I'm going to start with threes. Groups of threes, triplets, as they are called by most human beings. This is like a, an alternating exercise because we're going, if we start with right, left, right triplets, so right, left, right, the next three would be left, right, left. And as such, we can move from the right side of the kit to the left side of the kit. So we can take a few options. Basically, we're just going to play like a bar. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. We're going to play three somewhere, three another place, and we're going to return to our original position, and then three somewhere else. And again, you could try these different shapes. You could try different planes and different movements. You can try big movements, big jumps, if you want to get really like ergonomically challenging, or you can try just, I don't know, just smaller motions just to get used to it. So very simply, I'm going to just do it between two surfaces. I'm going to do the floor tom and the snare drum. But I am going to incorporate my left foot, stacking up the practice there. And I'm going to use, I'm going to try to make sure that I'm being as fluid as possible. So moving in the space. So this is going to be right, left, right, left, right, left. One triplet, two triplet. Quarter note left foot. So one triplet, two triplet. And I'm just going to go between the floor tom and the snare drum. build it up, get it faster. I used to be a lot faster at that. Um, now, that's just between two surfaces. What I like to do is challenge myself with either three different surfaces or four different surfaces. Um, so the three surfaces would give me floor tom, snare drum, floor tom, tom one. So I would probably go one triplet, floor tom, two triplet, snare drum, one triplet, floor tom, three, uh, yeah, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet up on the first tom. That would look like this. I'm being brutally honest, I'm feeling the tension start to creep in there. So I would, if I was wanted to dig back into this, maybe like get, I don't know, want to work on my speed or my fluidity around the kit, I would then push, sort of, sorry, not push it, but drag it back a very slight little bit and start there in my tempo. So instead of, I'm starting to feel some tension. I maybe go like, so whatever tempo that is. And then repeat that for a long period of time. Eventually relaxing, trying to breathe through it, counting, incorporating the left foot, etc., etc. You can incorporate the hi-hat as well, which is quite nice. Or you can change the starting position. So starting on the snare drum, you could then go right to left. Or you can incorporate stacker if you've got one. You get the idea, even cymbals and stuff like that. This is one of the main reasons I like to practice an electric kit because that's a lot of notes. And if you do it for five minutes a day, that is a lot of notes and a lot of noise. And you're not going to sound very good for five minutes. Whereas at least on the electric kit, and if you get one with slightly tunable mesh heads you'll and you set it up big, so it's do, you're doing big motions, it will still work the same. It'll still work on those mechanical things of flowing around the drum kit. I hope you noticed there, and when I was moving, I was kind of doing a a window washer idea, um, whereas things are whipping back and forth as opposed to like moving very strictly like this. Again, that's part of that fluidity. It's very much kind of, not that I've ever done it, but it's very Tai Chi kind of things. Trying to be fluid in all loose motions while still maintaining control. It's kind of the balance you're trying to strike. If, you, if you're too loose when you're flowing, your sticks are all falling about over the place. Whereas if you are too, if you're too tight, you're not gonna flow. So you want to find that Goldilocks zone of I've got just enough control to not drop the sticks and play the ideas that I want, but with as little tension as is humanly possible. So that's the threes idea. Um, you could do it left lead to go left to right. So left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Second floor, Tom. Hello. Ball, ball, ball. And you can maybe work on an exercise. You can create your own where you did... 
four bars right lead, four bars left lead, something like that. So left right, 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 boo, back and forth, back and forth. Again, part of stacked practice ideas is trying to do as as much efficiency as possible. So if you can alternate an exercise, alternate it. The next idea is to use um, either double or triple paradiddles, and this is dependent on the size of kit that you play. Now, if you're playing a either two up, one down, two up, two down kind of setup, I would use a triple paradiddle. The only reason for that is it works really nicely in 4-4. Four, four. If you try to do a triple, a double paradiddle over a, or sorry, a triple paradiddle over a four-piece kit, it might not be as efficient. Although you can make it work, and I'll show you a way that you can make it work. If you play a four-piece kit like me with, one rack, one floor, and a snare, then you're just going to do a double paradiddle. A double paradiddle is right, left, right, left, right, right. Da, ga, do, ga, do, do. And then the great thing about double paradiddles, and paradiddles in general, is they reverse. So left, right, left, right, left, left. It's going to sound like this. Wrong. It is quite a cool exercise to not use the snare and just go all the way down the toms if you've got four of them. Uh, my electric kit has four. One, two, three, four. Um, and you can even just set up, a, if you want to practice motion, you can just set up a, a, a practice pad over here and a practice pad over here. Uh, to do a triple paradiddle, what I would probably do is I would start in hi-hat. So I go hi-hat, hi-hat, snare, 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 floor, floor, and then reverse. Uh, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Without the microphone in the way, it sounds like this. And again, building it faster and faster, trying to be as fluid as possible. These are just exercises I've got in my sort of practice arsenal that will allow me to, if I wanted to, or if I felt the need, more, not, not necessarily wanted to, I want to be more fluid in the kit, I want to be faster, I want to be better, just at everything. But if I felt the need and I felt that my musical expression was being limited by my movement around the drum kit, I would dive back into those. And I would just sort of almost like pull those exercises off my practice bookshelf of stuff that I know works and I would just dive into them for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever, until I felt like I'd made enough progress to sort of keep me satisfied and I'd move on to something else. The final one as well is to use singles but then to put hands, uh, a foot in between them, sorry. So hand foot singles is like a big nemesis of mine. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to move in groups around the drum kit and what we can do is start to slowly decrease the groups as it were so we can start with four right so we can have one two three four one two three four and i'll do an l shape one two three four one two three four sorry switch cam again um one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and then i would do left lead left 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 right 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 left 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 but put a bass drum in between so it sounds like this That's fine. So that that notice I'm moving there. I'm trying to be fluid, etc., etc. But then we decrease the group. So I do a group of three. Overhead, just for drum nerdery. And then you guessed it. We're going to decrease it to two. Now here I'm having to move faster. I'm having to be more relaxed and move between the drums faster, so. This is a great one for getting that left hand shifted because, you know, you can put hands up in the comment below. I'm sure if this was a clinic and you're in person, I would get everybody to put their hand up because how many of you feel restricted by your left hand sort of inability to move? It's like, it doesn't, the right hand's like, yeah, I'm gonna move all the way around the drum kit. The left hand's like, nope, I'm gonna stick on the snare drum. I ain't going anywhere. Now that if you can get your left hand to move, your right hand to move and be fluid, you will find yourself freer to express yourself on the drum kit. That's kind of the point here. Uh, like everything on this channel, um, hopefully over the last like 
few months, a year, you've seen it's been geared towards doing stuff that we can use in musical situations, but not just like pop musical situations. It's all about expressing yourself in the music that you want to express yourself in. If that is death metal, you do it. If that is ska or if that is drum and bass, you do that. But you want to be fluid on the kit as like a neutral state that you're super fluid, super relaxed in the kit so you can actually play what's in your head instead of being restricted by your inability, in this case, to move around the drums. So that's all I've got for this. But if you have any questions, let's just pop them in the chat. Um, hey, Yeet, how's it going, buddy? Um, like I said, if you missed part of this, if the audio wasn't wet, wasn't decent, my bad on that one. I now know how to make it better. Um, if you were in the first stream, you'll know that the for 20 minutes, the audio was unlistenable. So at least quiet is better than absolutely unlistenable. So we're making progress. That's all I want to do. Um, if you have any questions about this or any questions at all, now would be your chance to ask them. But um, yeah, while you're doing that, I'm just going to play a little bit fluidly around the kit just to show you how I would maybe practice this flowing idea. No questions. Sweet. Um, if you have any questions, please do leave them just now or we'll leave it there, I think. Um, yeah. I think a big thing as well, just to say, is we can all be more fluid. We can all be more relaxed. So even if you think you're the most fluid person in the world, try change your tempo. Turn that tempo up. And then you might find that you are not as fluid as you think or you're not as clean as you think. Because there's no point ripping around the drums if it doesn't sound very clean. And my favorite drummers are the ones that rip around the drums but are also super clean in every note. And by clean, I mean like every note is clear. Every note is intentional. There's rims if there's meant to be rims. And there's rim shots if there's meant to be rim shots. But other than that, it's just this studio perfect clarity around the drums. Cool. I'm glad you're liking that, Nora. Um, it's now a semi-permanent fixture. I'm hoping that by the time, the next time uh, I do a stream, and I don't even know what month it is anymore, it's April, so in May I will have a little um, switcher, so it'll be a bit easier. I won't have to use OBS. It'll be a little bit smoother, um, and I can just switch on the fly. Um, and yes, we... Oh, thanks. Thanks, Yeet. Yeah, the kit is awesome, and that's mainly... Uh, actually, it's entirely... These two overhead mics, which you can't see because they're not in shock deliberately, and a little bit of kick drum mic. Um, again, positioning and taking the time to get things set up um, has been a really help over the last few, I guess, few weeks. Um, I hope you've been noticing the difference in the sound and the look of the videos that I'm putting out. Um, oh, there we go. I always struggle with coming out of the film back on the one. I think, yeah, Tim, defo. Um, but besides that, um, depend so if you were to ask me that question, um, I do this in lessons, by the way, I'll be like, um, yeah, I'll, I'll think about the question um, a little bit more. So I would have two questions for you as a student. I would ask you to think, am I unable to get back onto the one because of a movement thing? So for example, I feel really uncomfortable moving from Let's say you end your fills on the floor tom. So you end on the floor tom and you're coming back over here for the crash. Or is it that your hands are getting tangled? Because it's kind of two different solutions. Um, one thing that would be really, really useful for you is to practice this little um, improvisational flow exercise. And now I'm talking about flow as in um, mental flow. Play singles, right lead, Digga, 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 digga. That's what singles sound like, by the way. And then use right, right. You can only use a single right hand double. That was a really weird sentence. 
you can only use a right hand double every now and then whenever you want whenever you feel like you want to play a double you play a double what that'll do is it'll force you on your left quite a lot of the time but it'll give you an out to be like digger 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 right right crash small motion because if i'm hitting that crash on the one and this has played the ah instead of going ah one crossing over that would that would mess with me and sorry uh for e and ah one this has got loads of time to get back in position and a one yeah instead of and a one i'm feeling jarring i'm also feeling a stretch in my back because i'm kind of old so we'll not do that um i do get crossed up no question okay so try this then i'm gonna switch to the overhead cam maybe my mouse is in the wrong place great smooth mate here we go so you can play singles i'm gonna keep a quarter note left foot and then every now and then i'm gonna put a right hand but i'm only i'm gonna put it on the the floor tom just so you can see it Awesome thing about this, you can do it on the pad as well if you happen to do it late at night or you don't want to make any noise. So singles, right lead, and then I'm going to put a, a floor double on the floor tom every now and then. secretly smiling to myself there because I did one left hand double by being hyper um, sort of focused on doing a specific set you then notice the things of like oh I'm just gonna put a left hand double I'm feeling uncomfortable and we're trying to be comfortable being uncomfortable when we're playing the drum so you can be a bit more fluid that would be an awesome exercise the other thing is you can use a kick drum to get out your fills so the ah uh, could I, I use this all the time the ah uh of a fill might be a kick drum usually after a floor tom so that I can then get into the one. It's a bad dig to get blood to get to get a boom, ba boom, like that. Just so that I can then get into the one a little bit easier. Again, probably crashing your left hand. Um, cool, awesome. Uh, so now you've put it out in the universe. You have to practice it. You have to let me know how you get on. Because there's no point in saying I'm going to do it and then not do it. Okay, uh, Ye asked if there's any other drummers I watch on YouTube. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, I, I really like more from a like what. Not necessarily what drummers, what I could be inspired to play. Um, although I'd get that a lot from maybe watching like the Drumio stuff. If when they were putting out like loads of really cool stuff, I would you know check out Todd Sucker and I'd be like, I just watch that because I own and have owned pretty much every drum DVD um, by the big people, and I've got them all on download. And I love those kind of drum geekery DVD things. Um, so the Drumio stuff right really fits into that. I like Gabe from Drum Beats Online and obviously Mike Johnson. Um, but those are more from like the video point of view. Like I really like what they're doing with the videos. Um, and then, yeah, just trying to find inspiration outside of drumming as well. So watching camera people or just Inst Instagram is actually where I'm kind of spending most of my time getting inspiration from drummers. Um, oh, hey, Andrew, how's it going? Right, I had a beginner learning to play open-handed. I find it much more intuitive and easier to learn. Um, yeah, Tim, I'm holding you to that, buddy. Um, okay, uh, Andrew, the like, do what feels comfortable, right? Um, the only caveat I would say with that is if you have any desire to do a gig, um, well, this would be less of an issue if you're doing it open-handed, but if you were, like... Um, right, I'm going to learn to play open-handed. So I assume you're doing this this or or this i'm not sure are you playing a left kit right hand on the hi-hat or a, a right-handed kit left hand on the hi-hat um so in a more general sense can't make any worse there's some really amazing drummers carter Bulford, for example plays open-handed klaus hessler obviously um i just learned the way that it kind of looked in the magazines um i think I have spent a long time working on my hands to like get the left hand up a bit um, and always focus on that, you know, with like builder exercises, which are very left heavy. But if you can make it groove, man, like, and you feel comfortable playing the kit and obviously you've got your whole open handed thing um, or you kind of access to the toms, like you do it, man, whatever you want to do. The great thing about drums, here's what I absolutely love about the drums is you can play whatever kit you want in whatever weird way you want and you can set it up in 
whatever configuration you want and no one can say it's wrong because as long as you make the music feel good no one's going to care now with a guitar let's say you want to play a guitar i don't know let's say you want to add an extra string to your guitar you literally have to buy a whole new guitar if you want to add an extra snare drum and you want to put it here like up in this space over here cool you just get a really tall cymbal stand you clamp it really hard you probably gaff it to the ceiling and away you go you do what you want Whereas on a guitar or piano, you're kind of limited to what the instrument is made as. Um, so if you feel comfortable and you're feeling like you're getting somewhere with it, that's great. The only issue might be with the ride cymbal. So I was in college with guys who would play left hand open handed um, on the hi-hat, but play right hand open handed on the ride cymbal. So they'd always be open handed, which they were really, really great players. Honestly, there's a couple of them that were just like, this is, this is how I play here and this is how I play there. That might be something you want to experiment with. Um... Yeah, and if you want to swap the rate crash and ride position, let's try this again. If you want to swap the crash and the ride symbol positions, you do that because that's what Carter Beaufort does. Um, you know, if you notice, he's got all this kind of stuff here, but his ride symbols up here, and he is one of the baddest drummers in the world. So yeah, just do honestly, man. Just set it up the way that you want it, and I would just make sure that if you are doing a gig share and you're the headline band. That you got some spare stands for everyone else because if you're like that's quite a specialized setup so therefore you probably want to be you know have everything marked you don't want someone like me coming along and be like hey dude your ride symbol's in the wrong place and you put it somewhere else um yeah he uh rob brown is really good and he is doing some really cool stuff um he's been at it for quite a while i've known of rob for a long time and it's amazing how these guys are just around for years and then they suddenly explode. Um, so good on him. Yeah, he's a great player. Really sick, really sick player. And great, great videos. No worries, Andrew. I'm glad to be of service. If you, if there are no more questions, then we will leave it there. That was quite cool. Like That was just over an hour. That's really cool. Um, once again, I just want to say thanks for the support on my videos watching this like that's an hour of your time 20 minutes of your time you could be doing so many other things so thank you um if you like this kind of stuff look out for the next one check out my videos you can check out my online site if you really want to that's davemajormusic.com but until next time happy drumming guys stay safe out there wherever it is you are and i hope this opens up some more fluid possibilities for you catch you later guys take care